If you're a driver, have you ever had that magical moment where the green lights line up in front of you only to suddenly hit red light after red light? This keeps happening to me on my way to work and it's pretty frustrating. And my colleagues here in Calgary had heard a theory that the city was actually doing it on purpose to push back against speeding. So I looked into it and the theory is half right. Somebody is controlling those red lights from somewhere, but it's not to slow you down. Somehow those red lights are supposed to get everyone where they're going faster. And here's how. Let's start with who controls all those red lights. So this is Calgary's Mobility Operations Center. The engineers who work here have eyes on more than 100 traffic cameras 24 seven. And it looks like something out of a Hollywood movie. And the mission here is simple, keep traffic moving. But that's easier said than done in a city of more than 1.3 million people. So here's how they do it. Picture all the traffic lights in Calgary's downtown. Those signals are pre-timed and they're programmed to move as much volume out of the downtown area as possible, as efficiently as possible. That timing is determined in part by sophisticated software that uses the latest traffic data to determine how long each green light lasts, also known as green splits. But it's not all computers doing the work. These green splits are regularly reviewed by the engineers who work here and modified if any issues occur. So using a few keystrokes and mouse clicks, they can actually override traffic signals when necessary. And to understand why they make the decisions they do, you actually need to understand a bit of traffic flow theory. You have uh, a number of cars that want to use the road at a certain point of time. And if that number of cars, uh, we call it the demand, exceeds the capacity of the existing road, then it simply will not fit and you have congestion. So how do we alleviate that congestion? You've got some options. You can reduce the demand. That means decreasing the number of cars using the road simultaneously in areas and at times when congestion is high. You can increase the capacity of the road by building more infrastructure such as roads and transit. And a third option is actually to use artificial intelligence to make traffic lights more efficient. Now the problem with all of this is that traffic isn't constant. It changes minute to minute, day to day, weekend to weekend due to unpredictable things like weather and collisions. And that's why experts say smart traffic solutions need to be dynamic too. And any of these events can have a ripple effect. So imagine you have a bottle of liquid and you're pouring it into a glass. Now the size of the neck will actually determine how fast you can pour it into the glass. And what if that bottleneck was completely clogged? Say you put that bottle into a freezer. When you pull it out, it's half frozen. If you try to dump the liquid out of the bottle like this, then the ice itself clogs the bottleneck, then nothing is moving. So now take that metaphor to a freeway scenario and you have people on the main line and you have people merging. These two streams, if they kind of like interlock to a point where there is significant turbulence and people literally fighting as if you, you jam the piece of ice into that bottleneck and nothing will flow downstream of it. So if you have too many people trying to access the same narrow stretch of road, it could not only slow everyone down, it actually grinds things to a halt. And so it might feel counterintuitive, but the system actually works better if people slow down and pace themselves and maybe hit a red light or two. It sounds like an oxymoron in the sense that if you want to arrive faster, slow down, pace yourself. Don't rush in because as we know about rush hour, no one is rushing anywhere. And so it turns out there's actually a lot of people thinking about those red lights you hit and how to get you home faster. And the city of Calgary recently invested $8 million into this system. And the system is delivering some pretty solid results. Relative to a lot of other cities in Canada, Calgarians actually spend less time waiting in traffic. But this is just the start. Traffic management is only going to get more sophisticated. Currently, it's very human intensive, labor intensive. People have to be gazing at screens and adjusting things by hand. But uh, with advancements in technology, then AI will do that. 
And in the meantime, cities continue to explore different ways of lowering the demand on our roads by encouraging people to take public transit, walk, or bike. And however it's done, managing city traffic is complicated. And since my trip to Calgary's Mobility Operations Center, I've come to look at red lights a little bit differently. 